Hey, and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this in Blender, so you can make your videos more impressing and cooler. I'm using Blender 3.6 on a MacBook Pro, M1 chip and 16 RAM. So in this video, I use a soda can I made, but you can use any model of liquid product that you want. So now you can download the Blend file for free, so you can follow along the tutorial. Link in the description. So now we are going to set up the domain and the flow. And just a reminder, this is how I figured out the best way how to do it. But if you have a better method, do it instead. So first start with, press 1 on your numpad to get to the front view. This is how you enable the numpad for laptops. Go to Edit, the Preferences, go to the Input and check the Emulate numpad. Pressing Shift plus A to add a cube. So this cube is going to be the domain. Go to Edit Mode by hitting the Tab button. So this is the Tab button just right over the Caps Lock. Then press S to scale it up like this. Press Z to switch between the different shading modes and select the wireframe. Then press S to scale it up like this. Then go to object mode by hitting the tab button and press F2 to rename it to domain. For Mac user like me with the touch bar, press FN and then F2 to rename it. And then for the flow, select your soda can, press 3 on your numpad to get to the side view. Then press R to rotate like this and press G plus Z to move it up on the Z axis. Then press G plus Y to move it on the Y axis. Press 1 on your numpad to get to the front view. Then press Z to change between the shading modes and click on solid. Select your domain and go to object and unfold viewport display and change display as to wire. Select your soda can, go to edit mode by hitting the tab button and then click on this face selector and select all of this faces. Then press P to separate and click on selection and then rename it to flow. Then press Shift and click on your soda can. And press R to rotate it a little bit more. And press G plus Z to move it up on the Z axis. Press Z to switch between the different shading modes. And select the wireframe. And now select your flow. And then press G plus Z two times. So you can move diagonally on the Z axis. Select your soda can. Press 1 on your numpad to get to the front view. Go to edit mode by hitting the tab button. And then select any faces around this area. And then press L to select all edges that is linked or connected to the edge you just selected. Then press P to separate and click on Selection, and then rename it to Can Top. And now let's make the fluid simulation settings. So first start with Select Your Flow, and go to Physics. Click on Fluid, change the type to Flow, and change the Flow Type to Liquid. Change the Flow Behavior to Inflow, and on Frame 70, Click on this thing over here to make a keyframe. This orange thing over here is a keyframe. Then go to frame 71, uncheck the use flow, and make a keyframe for that too. Then unfold the flow source and change the surface emission to 7. Why we are changing this number is because the flow does not have any thickness. Check the initial velocity and change the normal to 50. And last, change the Y to minus 7. So the flow will go on the y-axis and to the negative side. Then select the can body. Click on fluid. Change type to effector. And change sampling substeps to 2. And the surface thickness to 0.7. Then select the can top. Click on fluid. Change type to effector. And change surface thickness to 0.5. So select your domain. Click on Fluid and change type to Domain and change the domain type to Liquid. Go to Object and unfold Viewport Display and change Display as to Wire. And you can also set up a shortcut for this. So you don't need to do this all the time. Use any key you want. I use the letter J as shortcut. Change the resolution to 128. This depends on what type of computer you have, but for better result, make that number higher. And just so you know, in the result video, the resolution is on 256. But for this tutorial, I'm doing 128 in resolution. And uncheck all the border collisions. Scroll down to the cache settings. Change the type to modular. That means you can bake each thing separate. And then change the end to 110. And change the end frame to 110 as well. And don't forget to check the is resumable. That means if you want to cancel your baking and just wants to see how it look likes, you can now bake from the frame you canceled. And then scroll up to the settings and click on Bake. Wait for the baking to bake. Then scroll down to Mesh. Check the mesh. Change up res factor to 4. And change the particle radius to 1.7.
and last, change the smoothing positive and the negative to 3. Then click on Bake. Wait for the baking to bake. So I accidentally canceled my baking. So this is a perfect example of the is resumable we just checked. Now we can continue baking from frame 35 by click on the resume. So now we are going to wait for the baking to bake again. Now change the viewport display to solid again. Then right click and shade smooth. So let's make a liquid material for our fluid. So select your domain. Go to shadings and then click on new. Then select your principled BSDF and press X to delete it and then press Shift plus A to add a glass shader. Plug BSDF to surface. Change the IOR to 1.333, and then change the color to something that matched the drink's color. In my case, this drink is pinkish. And then add volume absorption. Plug the volume to the volume, and change the color a little bit darker than the other color. Now let's set up the HDRI, so go to World. Click on this yellow dot and select the environment texture. In the description, I linked the HDRI I used. So download that. Click on Open and choose you HDRI image. And here we have a liquid material. So I'll show you my render settings. So I render in Cycles and GPU. Check the denoise. And change the noise threshold to 0.1. So you can render faster. My max samples I use is 300. I also like to use motion blur, so check that if you want. Another thing I like to do is go to the view layer and check the denoising data. Then go to compositing, press shift plus A to add a denoise, then plug noisy image to image, plug denoising normal to normal, and last plug denoising albedo to albedo. Then go to the output, change the file format to FMPEG video, and change the container to MPEG4. And last go to the video and change the output quality to high quality. And here is my results. And feel free to subscribe for more tutorials and videos. Thank you for watching and I hope you like my tutorial. Comment down below what I can make in the next video and with the editing and all that thing.